Hello and welcome to another episode of India Detailed. Today, we are going to talk about invasions. Since ancient times, India has seen many invasions. Although the northwestern frontier was protected by the Hindu Kush ranges, many did invade. For example, Darius I in the 6th century BCE and Alexander III in the 4th century BCE. More on that in a bit. Alexander or Alexander the 3rd or Alexander the Great was a king of the ancient kingdom of Macedon located in Greece. He spent his entire life building one of the greatest empires Greece had ever seen. He aspired to reach and conquer the ends of the world, which basically meant Persia or India, as back then it was believed that the earth was flat and it did end somewhere after India. When Alexander was young, his father bought a horse that refused to be mounted. In the end, it was Alexander who controlled it. Impressed with this feat, his father Philip said that Macedon was too small for his ambitions and that he should invade the other great kingdoms. So he ascended the throne after his father and began eliminating their rivals one by one, including their arch enemies, the Persians. By 333 BCE, Alexander had reached Anatolia, where he met Darius III of the Achaemenid Empire. Though being outnumbered, he defeated Darius, leaving Darius to flee for his life. It was then that Alexander did something great. He burned down the royal palace of Persepolis. Anyway, it happened so that he met Darius again during the battle of Guagamilla, but this time Darius was killed. Now even though half of the known world was under his empire, he was hungry for more and thus he began his campaign to India. Alexander marched towards India with his army defeating anyone who opposed him, including Gandhar, Takshashila, Scythia, etc., until he stood on the banks of Hidaspes, the Jhelum River, where his opponent was Porus or Puru. In the ensuing battle, Porus was defeated. Legend has it that when Alexander asked him, How should I treat you? Porus replied, Treat me, O king, in a kingly way. And so, Alexander spared his life. Alexander wanted to move further after this, but there was a mutiny in his army as the soldiers were tired of constant homicide and were homesick. Also, there's a legend that says that Alexander once met a monk who questioned him about his doings after conquering the whole world. He further said that he might think of himself as a god, but he is not a god as god never kills but gives. It is said that Alexander had no answers and that is when he realized that he should return. To control his conquered territories, Alexander appointed regional officers or satraps. After his death in Babylon in 323 BCE, the Diadochi started to fight for his kingdom. The Diadochi or the successors were generals, army officers, friends and family of Alexander. There was a fight amongst them for the possession of Alexander's kingdom. The northwestern boundary of India was controlled by Seleucus Nicator I who established the Seleucid Empire. In 305 BCE, he invaded the newly established Mauryan kingdom of Chandragupta Maurya. Nicator was defeated and they called a truce. Now later on, because of weak successors and the disintegration of the empire, the Seleucid Empire fell, giving birth to the Greco-Bactrian kingdom which further evolved into the Indo-Greek kingdom. Because of these invasions, a lot of things happened. Indians exchanged social, religious, political and economic ideas and thoughts with the Westerners which led to a change in their lives. For starters, the Greeks introduced idol worship, which was unknown to Indians as the Vedic tradition strictly opposed it. Cultural values were exchanged along with trade. Influence of Greco-Persian and Greco-Roman tradition is seen in art and architecture of India. The artists who stayed back created or helped in creating monuments or works of art built from the Ashokan times. So this was it about the not so great, but eventually beneficiary invasion of Alexander the may be great hope you liked this episode do like and share this video and remember history is always in the making